Oh, whenever you've been working at a job for a while, been putting in your time there, and then you end up getting a significant promotion. When you get that significant promotion, it normally comes with a nice pay raise, uh, but also added responsibilities and added expectations. Uh, and depending on what your job is, depending on what the title is, what department you're in, uh, whatever area of your company that you're covering, that may also come with an added responsibility of leadership. And that seems to be the case for Lamar Jackson with the Baltimore Ravens. Now, we already know and knew that Lamar Jackson was a leader. Uh, we've seen that from his rookie year uh, moving forward. But it seems like with each year, uh, the leadership aspect has grown a bit because we remember before, like when he was a rookie, he was more of a quiet leader. Uh, and not that now he's this rah, 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 and da, 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 da type of leader because he, do, he doesn't have to be that. But now uh, with him, especially being in more control of this Baltimore Ravens offense, it's expected that he becomes more of a vocal leader. Now, uh, whenever we as Ravens fans talk about leadership, uh, and it's unfair to literally everybody, every Ravens player who has taken on a role of leadership, but it's ha it happens. It's what we do. It's, it's, it's just ingrained in our minds. Whenever we talk about leadership as Ravens fans, first thing we think about is Ray Lewis. It's the first thing we think about. And how Ray Lewis was, Ray Ru Lewis was the rah-rah and get him hyped and all that. You always heard Ray Lewis. That was like extremely vocal leadership. And we loved it. We embraced it. We took it on and we got so used to it. And that's why we always say when Ray Lewis left, when he retired, um, that's for me personally, that's when I realized, oh, well, leadership is something that's, it, I, I just didn't appreciate it enough. Um, but now with Lamar Jackson, him getting ready to just take a significant role, uh, just increase the significant role that he already had. Because it's not like Lamar Jackson's going from not being a leader to all of a sudden being a leader. No, 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 because he's been a leader for this team for the longest. But now things will be different. And one of the ways that they'll be different, it's tough to lead. It makes it harder to lead, in my opinion, when you only have so much power, depending on what the situation is, because every situation is different. But with Lamar Jackson, is like... When, when the offense was under Greg Roman and whatnot, he could still lead, but at the same time, he could only tell the guys a couple of things. They couldn't really make adjustments like that. They couldn't really go no huddle like that, as we learned before. Um, that it was very restricted. It was extremely restricted. But now, with freedom, a lot of the guys will really be following his lead. They'll be following his command. They'll be following what he says to do because... Now the restrictions are being taken off. And since there's not going to be restrictions, he's going to have to hold this thing down. And, and I'm looking forward to seeing Lamar Jackson hold this thing down for the Ravens offense. It should be good. But what I wanted to talk about in today's video, um, besides the leadership, we, we never went over his presser. We never went over his presser. I'm like, man, that, that presser was like almost, it felt like it was like three weeks ago. We ain't never go over I know it wasn't that long ago, but we ain't never go over his presser. And we're going to do uh, just that today. But team, keep it clean. Um, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, make sure you turn your notifications on. Because, again, I want y'all to stay up to date with everything. Everything. Uh, leave a like on the video, too, because it helps out a lot. More than you realize. So I, I appreciate y'all supporting I love y'all so much, and I really hope everything is going just great for y'all. Whatever's going on in your life, I hope it's going great. And if it's not, keep going. Keep going. Because you always got later on today. You always got later on tonight. You always got tomorrow for stuff to really get turned around. So I appreciate y'all. Uh, but Lamar Jackson, uh, when he first came to the party, he actually sounded like he just woke up. And I think it was actually before practice. So, but yeah, he sounded tired, man. But he talked about Odell Beckham Jr. He said Odell looked smooth. He had crisp routes and he had great hands. And that's what we like to hear. Because, uh, and I mean, I wasn't expecting to say, hey, man, Odell looked bad. He looked rough. He looked, he looked tore up. But, nah, that's what we're hoping for, for from Odell. We know what he's capable of. Um, and with Odell Beckham Jr., it's like when you think about it, it's like, man, this guy. Um, just imagining a healthy Odell Beckham Jr. Because we saw an unhealthy Odell Beckham Jr. a couple years ago. 
Tanner Lee got, I mean, he tore the Ravens up. He caught the Ravens slipping a couple times. Scored on the Ravens. Uh, I think, what, what was it, the, the two-point conversion that the Rams got? Was, no, not the two-point conversion. It was a fourth down play. And it went to Odell, and he got it. Like, so this man, like, he, yeah, he, he was doing his thing against the Ravens in that Rams versus Ravens game. And then, of course, that same year, uh, the Rams won the Super Bowl, and he was doing his thing. Like, he wasn't just along for the ride. No, Odell was po- a big part of the ride. So, yeah. Um, so just imagining seeing that on the Baltimore Ravens healthy. He wasn't even healthy and he was doing that. Ooh. <laughs> so, yeah, I can't wait to see it, man. Um, but Lamar talked about how he believes it's very important to keep building their chemistry because the season, it's like right there. It's right there. It's close. And I know a lot of fans, the way we see it, it's like, man, no, the season's so far away. It's the middle of June. We got three months until the season starts. For me, I feel like it's just been moving so fast. It's been moving extremely fast. And, yeah, we are three months away, about, like, actually less than three months away. But it just, it needs to slow down. All season needs to slow down a bit. So, anyway, I know most, most of y'all probably disagree with that. But for me, I, I, it needs to slow down. Um, and he was asked, are you feeling more comfortable making adjustments? And he said, absolutely. The more uh, I've, and I'm, I've been here, it helps the both of us a lot. Monkey giving us the keys to the offense and letting us do our thing is helping a lot. And that's true because it, it opens stuff up. It, it allows, it puts more responsibility on Lamar's shoulders. But he should have been had more responsibility. Like he should have been had a lot more responsibility years ago. Should have been more put on. And I'm sure there was more and more put on his shoulders every year. But like something like this, having that freedom, should have been given to him years ago. Anyway, uh, you got five former first round picks at wide receiver. How much do you think uh, of their expectations? And Lamar said the guys just had to get out there and do what they do. Uh, and somebody asked, how long do you think it'll take t- to feel comfortable in Todd Monken's offense? And Lamar just said that the, the sky's the limit and that it won't take long to learn the playbook. Uh, it's just about studying. I said, and putting the work in. Uh, he was asked, uh, when he leaves, uh, how, do, how does he want to leave things after the last practice that the Ravens had? Uh, and he said, just let's make ourselves look good out there. Um, somebody asked him, that, that, or they told him Monken is very keen on small details. Uh, and is that starting to rub off on you? Are you starting to be more vocal? And Lamar said, yeah, he is. Uh, he talked about how Nelly went out for a route, that being um, Nelson Aguilar. So, th- th- again, that's that's report right there. You, you start calling somebody by n- anything other than a gov- government name, then that's report right there. But he said how he went out for a route, uh, and Lamar had sort of corrected him on something. So, and, and that's what it's about, man. That's part of the leadership right there, just giving people direction. And now it's, a leader, being a leader is not about being a tyrant. It's not about, oh, I'm better than you, I'm over you, I got more power and more authority over you. No, it ain't nothing like that. Because there are le- leaders that do that, but those are usually not good leaders. Um, but good leaders are somebody who can be approachable, um, who will, they, they'll come to you with uh, fair criticism and whatnot, and they'll talk about the, but they'll give you both the good and the bad. They're not just going to talk about all the bad and that's it. No, they're going to tell you, they're going to give you constructive criticism. They're going to help build you up. They're going to tell you what you do great. They're going to tell you, hey, what you don't do so great and what you could improve on. So that's, that's important. And with good leaders, too, they can accept it as well. They can take it uh, because they know that they're not perfect. They know that there's areas that they could improve on, too. So they're willing to listen. So that's important. But anyway, let's get back to this. We're getting sidetracked. Um, with, uh, with Lamar, one thing that I noticed when he talked about the offense um, he didn't really he wasn't really going for the uh the big comparisons that wasn't his thing like comparing monk's offense to to giro's offense he did say yeah we're getting the keys now but it's like lamar made sure to be very careful um not to take a shot at greg roman um and i appreciated that i appreciated that because that's um that's respect right there and even even if he would have um but that's that that's his character right there and that that was uh significant to me at least uh, Cause somebody asked him, getting the keys to the offense was that something that you were eager for in the past? So you see, I know, I know the report. I know, I know, I know that. Goes. But anyway, he said uh, that he was definitely eager, uh, and he said there would be things that they will see in the game that they didn't see on film. But he's glad Munkin is letting them get that control. Um, so yeah, so again, talking about the past, like hey, we we will see some things, and 
but they just wouldn't be able to really address those things because of the limits of the offense previously. So having this freedom is just it's huge in so many different ways. Um, he said that the, the goal because he said is how his uh, his quote got taken out of context. And we talked about that before uh, back in May. He said the goal is never about the yards when the whole 6,000 yards thing came out. Uh, but he said people blew it out of proportion. And he said his goal is just the Super Bowl. Uh, however, they, however they can get there, it, he said it don't matter, man. That's just the goal. Man. That goal never changed. Uh, how important is it to go at a faster pace? Uh, he said it's very important because we got the play clock going uh, and we can see what the defense is in and we can make adjustments. And again, the freedom, the, the, the freedom is just going to go such a long way. It really is. Because, um, again, when he talked about the play clock, it's like, yeah, they, that was one of their biggest enemies last well, for the past couple of years is the play clock. Um, I know there were some people that feel like, oh, if the Ravens got to the line of scrimmage late, then um well not late but with less time uh then that would uh help the i mean that would help the offense because the defense wouldn't be able to see what they were in so the defense could make less adjustments well, it's true but a lot of t there'll be a lot of times where they just it some stuff will be sloppy they'll be delayed games and then stuff could just be off um again not if the, uh it, it would just be frustrating man it, it would just be frustrating to see it like consistently to see that be an issue and to know that in that previous offense that had been an issue with other teams before too and it was just it just really a great roman thing for that it was just really a great roman thing that had been an issue for the longest but anyway um he says that he doesn't feel any added pressure uh as far as taking on more responsibility uh being a quarterback being in a new offense there's no added pressure anything like that um he said, uh, hopefully, some of the guys will come down to South Florida with him and OBJ. Uh, so, I mean, I'm, I'm sure plenty of them will uh, because, hey, it's Lamar, it's OBJ. I'm trying to get on the same page as them, too. I'm sure Nelson Aguilar will be there like he was before with o with Lamar. Um, so, I'm, I'm sure a lot of them will be down there. And especially, too, because, hey, OBJ, Bateman, um, Aguilar, Duvernay, Zay Flowers. Maybe those five are locks. So if if I'm one of those five receivers, I'm, I'm still trying to go down. But if I'm not one of those five receivers, then I'm definitely I'm definitely gonna be in South Florida for, with with Lamar and OBJ. I'm definitely. Even if y'all don't invite me, I'm showing up. I'm gonna I'm I'm find where y'all are. Cause I, look, man, I'm trying to make this team the best way I can. I'm trying to do any and everything I possibly can to make it. So. I, I think it would be a good idea for especially anybody minus those five receivers. Well, obviously with those five receivers too, but it would be a great idea for whoever else to just go down there if they can, if they get the opportunity to. Um, uh, he was asked, is there someone in the offense that's going to be utilized a lot more? Uh, and he said pretty much all the wide receivers uh, and all the tight ends. So he kept it very, very general. Um he, and uh, he, somebody asked about him and uh, his cousin Trayvon Mullen, like playing on the same team. Like, they, did you have any part in that? And how did you how did that come about? Did you ever think it was gonna happen? Uh, he said it'd be dope if they could win the Super Bowl at the same team. He said on the same team. I mean, he said they always uh, had been used to going up, going up against each other all the time, but they had never played on the same team. So for them to actually be able to do it now is nice. Uh, and then he was also asked if, if he was still working with that same private QB coach. And he said he hadn't yet, but it's pretty much going to be the same off, same this offseason and he'll be uh, working with him. So that was nice to hear. Uh, and then I know uh, Todd Munkin, he spoke after that. So um, just basically just being ready. Um, and, and Todd Munkin was saying a lot of the same stuff. Um, and the one thing I, I noticed with Todd Munkin, that he um, – like, he tell you like it is, man, from what we've seen so far. Like, he ain't with the small talk. He ain't with the um, sugarcoating stuff. That's what I say. He, he's, he's not a sugarcoater. Like, somebody asked him, oh, do you, uh, are you building a rapport with Lamar? And he was like, he said something like, I, I, I think so. I, I mean, Lamar's a nice guy. I mean, I think I would have to build a rapport with him. It is a quarterback, right? So, but he like, yeah, he tell you like it is, man. So I appreciate that. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to it, man. I'm looking forward to it. Um, 
I, I hope with with Todd Munkin and, and they've talked about it. like we've seen a lot of reporters talk about with Todd Munkin how he he will correct a lot of stuff like if Ravens offense is doing something wrong he'll stop practice and call it out right then and they're like hey no that's wrong and I love that I hope that Todd Munkin is hard on Lamar hard on the the receivers the tight ends the entire offense and I, I, I and it seems like he is that way uh, Cause he just knows what they capable of. He knows what he wants out of his offense. He knows what he wants to get done. Um, and because when 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 you're hard on somebody, you're usually only hard on people who you really really got love for, and you really really see a lot of potential in them. If you're easy on somebody, you'll be like, oh no, it's okay. Ah, uh, nah, they they can't take it. And maybe maybe they may not improve so much anyway. But if you're hard on somebody. Then it's like, oh, no, no, I, I know what you can do. Not just you got to be like that on them 24-7, but y'all get what I'm saying. So, yeah, man, this should, this should be fun, man. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Really, really look. I know a lot of us are looking forward to it. And I know somebody brought up before, like, oh, man, I think Ravens fans got to slow down because it seems like they're so excited for this new offense just because it's a new offense. Uh, we don't know what to expect. And, da, 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 da. and uh, I mean, that's true, but at the same time, it's a new offense, and it should be more. Um, just want it to be less predictable. I really don't want it to be predictable at all, but less predictable, um, more creative, and just really using guys' talents, utilizing their strengths, playing them to their strengths consistently. So we'll see how things go. But thank you, clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all so much, and we are.